H. A. Ray uh, had fun. They had fun and entertained themselves with these Curious George books. Curious George was created in 1939, and as I'm recording this in 2017, a Curious George movie is in the process of being made, a whole 78 years later. What is so special about Curious George that it can maintain a regular stance in children's entertainment for so long? Let's start at the beginning. Cicely G. and the Nine Monkeys is the first appearance of the beloved character. H.A. Ray, full named Hans Augusto Ryersbach, loved the little guy so much, probably because he had two monkeys as pets before, he created a new manuscript with him as the focal point and named him Fifi. Don't worry, this is the same monkey you know and love. Unfortunately, World War II began the same year. Fifi was then put on hold while the war worsened and as Hans illustrated another children's book about a penguin, to escape Paris, Hans and his wife Margaret, who were both Jewish, had to build their own bicycles from spare parts and began their long journey with very few of their belongings, not excluding Fifi's manuscript. They left to live in New York City, which became the famous setting for Fifi's renamed Curious George's Antics. Starting his journey there, he grew into the icon he is today. But how does this relate to how Curious George is different than other kids' entertainment? There are several themes taught in Judaism found in Curious George. One, for example, is their belief in the importance of strong relationships. Curious George and the man in the yellow hat have a strong, supportive father-son relationship. Another belief is that the good will be rewarded and the evil punished. And Curious George takes the job. George goes into someone else's apartment and paints all over the walls. When the real painters return, Curious George runs away to escape, but gets hurt in the process. Ray writes, If only he had not been so curious, he would have had a lot of fun. Now it was too late. Another belief shared in Judaism is the following, as written by JewFAQ.org. In most ways, the adoptive parents are to the child as any birth parent would be. Just as the man in the yellow hat is for George. He feeds him, provides for him, and teaches him. The article continues. For those who cannot have children of their own, raising adoptive children satisfies the obligation to be fruitful and multiply. The man in the yellow hat is not married or in a romantic relationship, so George becomes his way of multiplying, satisfying the obligation. Because of the author's beliefs, the different lessons and focuses in the books may have separated it from others and enabled it to grow further. This is George. He lived in Africa. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. One day, George saw a man. He had on a large yellow straw hat. The man saw George, too. What a nice little monkey, he thought. I would like to take him home with me. He put his hat on the ground, and of course, George was curious. He came down from the tree to look at the large yellow hat. The hat had been on the man's head. George thought it would be nice to have it on his own head. He picked it up and put it on. The hat covered George's head. He couldn't see. The man picked him up quickly and popped him into a bag. George was caught. Yes, you heard that correctly. George just got kidnapped. But that isn't the only unexpected occurrence in the first ever Curious George book. He goes in the smoke, becomes imprisoned, and escapes from prison all in the first book. George has changed a lot since that book. Now the most popular incarnation of Curious George is the PBS television show. There was an episode on recycling, endangered animals, and rainforest awareness, as well as several other modern topics. So is the fact that Curious George is flexible and can adjust to the time what makes it popular for so long? Looking at any of the stories with the curious monkey, you can find that George is a troublemaker, though he doesn't try to be. His actions can also be very dangerous sometimes. Bike riding into the city alone, jumping on buses, and climbing buildings are just a few examples. You may be thinking that this is a detrimental thing to be showing children, as they are very impressionable. But listen to what Jeff Harrison, the Chrysler Museum curator, says on the subject. The Rays decided that they were going to create uh, an animal character who embodied all the best 
uh, of childhood antics. Um, somebody who was fearless, um, who could go right to the brink of something, who wasn't afraid of making a mess, um, but uh, fortunately for George, and um, for most kids too, there's always uh, a man in the yellow hat that is a grown-up um, um, who will show up and pull you back from the brink and clean up the mess. George is basically a stand-in for all kids um, who have curiosity and energy and want to have fun. In other words, Curious George provides a vicarious thrill for children. He can do things that they can't or aren't allowed to do, and it's my theory that because he is a monkey, there is less confusion on why he can do those things. For example, children realize they can't climb a building, so George doing it does not really encourage them to, in the same way that they realize they aren't supposed to go alone into the city, though George, a monkey, can. This little bit of separation from the character ensures that kids don't follow his actions, but all the same, they can learn from them. The reason I decided to look at Curious George analytically in the first place was that my favorite television producer, Noah Hawley, stated in an interview that he watches Curious George in his spare time because of its great, relaxing storytelling. After reading this, I realized that when watching Curious George with my two-year-old nephew, I was also enjoying the story and lesson. I can't sit through a Mickey Mouse Clubhouse or PJ Masks without many groans, but Curious George was enthralling. And after some research, I found a possible cause. The show was directed by Ron Howard, the same guy who produced A Beautiful Mind, The Da Vinci Code, The Dark Tower, Angels and Demons, Arrested Development, and many more famous mature films and television shows. He has said, One of the great things about being a director as a life choice is that it can never be mastered. Every story with its own expedition, with its own set of challenges. It is clear that PBS's Curious George is a product of this mindset, as it is unlike anything he has done. Despite this, he still brought his own style to the show, demonstrated through the fact that Curious George appeals to adults and teenagers as well as children. These are just a few aspects that may contribute to George's success. Do you agree with these? Which one do you think was most essential to his growing fame? Or is there more than one? Write your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.